Hello and welcome to my video. We're going to be looking at exam style questions. In particular, we're going to be looking at A-level and Scottish higher maths. So let's look at an example. Question number one. Find the equation of the line perpendicular to 4x plus 3y equals 1, passing through the point minus 2, 3. And this is worth three marks on an exam, not a lot of marks. Okay, now there's several ways you can approach this. Before I get into this, let's just look at a little bit of theory, which some of you might already know. You should know this. You will need to know this to answer the question. So down here, I've drawn a little sketch of a graph. And let me explain the graph slightly. So we've got a line here, the black line going from left to right up here. This is y equals x. That has a slope or a gradient of 1, so m1 equals 1. So m1 is the slope of this line y equals x. And then the one going down this way, this is at right angles, actually, to this one. It's perpendicular. And we all know that as y equals minus x. It's basically a reflection in the y-axis and just going in the opposite direction. So its gradient is minus 1. Okay, so it's negative of... The gradient is negative of this one. So m2 is equal to minus 1. So m2 is the gradient of y equals minus x. Now, a fundamental principle that most of you should know, and you'll need to know to answer the question, as I say, is that the product of the gradients of perpendicular lines, so perpendicular means at right angles. So the question says, find the equation of the line perpendicular to that equation. So the product of the gradients, m1 and m2, is equal to minus 1. And this is always the case, regardless of whatever m m1, m2, or y, or x we choose. Okay, and you can choose any equations, any lines you like. Now, the blue lines, the reason I've drawn those in is just to illustrate the principle a little bit more. It's not a proof, but it's just to show you a rough idea where it comes from uh, to help you understand it. Now, what the blue lines are basically is, what I've done is I've taken the... The black lines, if you if you think of the black lines, they're, they're perpendicular to one another, so they form a cross, yeah? So we want to preserve the cross. So how do we do that? Well, we rotate it by an angle. We'll call the angle dot. doesn't matter what the angle is. Now, we rotate that by dot, so that means this part here, y equals x, will become this blue line here. Now, it'll have a different equation. Could be anything. We don't know what it is yet. But its gradient, as you can see, will be a wee bit smaller than 1. It's not as steep. Okay, and the one perpendicular to it, this one here, this blue line here, that has been rotated by the same angle, dot. Okay, so y equals minus x becomes this blue line here. I've not wrote the equations down. As I say, they could be anything. That's not important. I just wanted to show you that rotating the cross through an angle dot will give you another cross, which is the blue lines. And again, they're perpendicular to one another. And the basic principle says that you can rotate that however much you want, but the product of the gradients will always be the same. It will always be minus one. Well, it's pretty obvious for y equals x and y equals minus x that the product of the gradients is minus 1 because it's just 1 times minus 1. But it's not so obvious that it works in general. As I say, it does work in general. We're not going to prove it in this video. We'll look at it in another video. Okay, so this was just to illustrate it slightly. Okay, so we will need to know this and use this to answer this question up here. And let's go over here for a second. So I've got, imagine you've got two lines, y equals m1x plus c1 and y equals m2x plus c2. Well then, m1 times m2 is minus 1. So we're going to be using that. Okay, so let's tuck into the question itself. So it's written in a slightly different form. It's written in the form ax plus by equals c. So we could actually write that down in that form as well if we want, and 
when it says find the equation of the line perpendicular, we could also write that in the same form if we want, or we can write it in the form y equals mx plus c. It's entirely up to yourself. But because it's written in this form in the question, I'm going to write it in that form as well. So I'm going to write the answer in that form. ax plus by equals c. I'm not going to write it in this form. Okay, just to keep a bit of consistency with the question. Okay, so let me rub this out and um, we, will, we will do a solution of this problem. So as I say, just all you need to know for this, a little hint for this question is gradient. Think gradient and think product of gradients. So product of gradients is minus one. That's what you got to think about. And you can answer this question very quickly. As I say, it's only three marks, so it shouldn't be taking a lot of writing and a lot of work. Right, so what, we'll, what we will do, however, we'll have to rearrange this into, into the form y equals mx plus c, so let's do that. So I'll write the equation down again, 4x plus 3y equals 1. So that means uh, 3y is equal to minus 4x plus 1. So y is equal to minus 4 over 3x plus 1. So therefore, m is equal to minus 4 over 3, or we can call it m1. Now what is that? That's the gradient. Okay, that's the gradient of this line. Right, so now we know that m1 so we know m1 times m2 equals minus 1. And why is that? Because basic principle, product of the gradients of perpendicular lines equals minus one. Okay, so that's something that you should be memorizing. Okay, it might be given in a formula sheet, it might not be. Okay, now we're going to use that to finish off the question. Okay, so let's go over here. So M1 times m2 equals minus 1. I'm just going to use a dot for multiplication here. So therefore, m2 is equal to minus 1 over m1, which equals minus 1 over, well, what's m1? It's minus 4 over 3. So write that down. So the minus is cancel, and then it's the same as 1 over 4 over 3, if you know what I mean. So then m2 is just 3 over 4. Now I'll show you a little trick here, which if you're doing these in an exam and you're wanting to do, answer them faster, now you might need to show the full working out obviously, but it's just to show you um, a little trick which to make sure you've got the right answer. So as you can see, it's written in the form ax plus by equals c. So to find the gradient of the perpendicular line, you just divide the coefficient of y by the coefficient of x, okay? So you can see that it's three over four. Coefficient of y is three, coefficient of x is four. Okay, so that, I'll just put this in, in brackets. So that equals b over a, where ax plus b, y equals c. So in this example, a is 4, b is 3, c is 1. So to find the gradient of the perpendicular line, it's b over a. The gradient of the line that we're actually working with is minus a over b. Okay, but we already know that. We're not interested in that. We want to find the perpendicular line. Okay, so that's a little tip. You want to find the gradient very fast of the perpendicular line it's just b over a 
where ax plus by equals c. Right, so now that we've got that, we just need to write our equation down. Now, we're told that it passes through the point minus 2, 3. And we now know its gradient is 3 quarters. So let's start writing the equation down again. So this is our new line now. So y is equal to 3 quarters x plus c. So to find c, we need to plug in the values of the point that we're given. This is actually the point of intersection. So this is where the two perpendicular lines meet. So let's plug that in. So at the point 2, 3, we have minus 2, 3, sorry, we have 3 is equal to 3 quarters times minus 2 plus c. So c is equal to 3 minus 3 quarters times minus 2, which is 3 plus 3 over 2. So what's that? That's 4 and a half or 9 over 2. Right, so c is equal to 9 over 2. Okay, so that's the equation found. We'll, we'll, we'll tidy it up and we'll bring it over here. So the equation is y equals 3 quarters x plus 9 over 2. Now, that's written in the form y equals mx plus c. But as I said earlier, I'm going to write it in the other form. I'm going to write it in the same form as up here in the question, which is ax plus by equals c. Now, the c here isn't necessarily where it cuts the y-axis. I've just called it c. C is just the constant term on the right. That's all the c means here. a is the coefficient of x, b is the coefficient of y. Okay, so we've got y equals 3 quarters x plus 9 over 2. So let's tidy this up a little bit. We can uh, multiply through by 4. And that will give us 4y equals 3x. 9 over 2 times 4. Well, if you times 2, you get 9. And then times 2 again is 18 because you're multiplying it by 4. So that's 3x plus 18. And then we'll just put the x and the y terms together and have the 18 on the other side. I'll put the x term first. Or sorry, I'll put the... Um, I'll bring the x over anyway. Let's bring the x over. So 4y minus 3x equals 18. So that's the answer. That's the perpendicular line. That's the equation of the line, which is perpendicular to 4x plus 3y equals 1, passing through the point minus 2, 3. Now let's just check that it does in fact pass through that point. We need to plug those values back in again to make sure it comes out to 18. So 4y is equal to 12 minus 3 times x. Well, x is minus 2, so 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. So 12 minus minus 6 is 18, okay? And why is that perpendicular? It's perpendicular because that its gradient is 3 quarters. Its gradient has to be minus 1 over the gradient of the first line. So let's summarize and write all that down. So this is the answer to the perpendicular line. I'll put it in a little box. And this was our original equation. And intersection point. Okay, so when you plug that intersection point into any of those two equations, 
it will give you the answer. So it will give you 18 in this case and 1 in this case. So it works out, okay? Now, what you'll notice, another thing, another little trick I'll show you for the future. I showed you how earlier to quickly work out the gradient of the perpendicular line. It's just the coefficient of y over the coefficient of x in the original question. So it's 3 quarters. But another thing I want you to notice as well, notice the similarity between the original equation and the perpendicular equation. You'll notice that the coefficients of x and y are the same. Now they're not, what I mean by that is that the coefficient of x and y, they basically swap places. They're, what I mean by the same is they're the same as in, as in the two values of the same, 3 and 4. But all that's happened is they swap places. Ignore the negative sign for a minute. Just focus on the coefficients of x and y. So the coefficient of y in the first equation becomes the coefficient of x in the second equation. And the coefficient of x in the first equation becomes the coefficient of y in the second equation. So they just swap places, 3 and 4. Not only that, one other little thing you have to watch for. So just, if you want to solve these quicker, this is another way of getting the answer. But obviously, you, you will probably still have to still do all your working out to get full credit. But it's just to make sure that you know that you're on the right path, getting the right answer. So this is a little tip. Basically, swap the coefficients around. Okay? But then what you also have to do, you have to change the sign in the middle. So if your original line has a plus between the x and the y, then your perpendicular line is going to have a minus sign. Not only that, you're going to have the y coming first and the x coming second. So what you're actually doing, you're not swapping the coefficients, you're actually swapping the variables x and y. So that's the best way to think about it. You're swapping x and y around. So let's just quickly show you that. So if I had 4x plus 3y equals 1. So I'm going to swap x and y. So it's going to be 4y 3x equals something. Then I need to put a minus sign in here. Okay. And then we just need to find this constant term. And then, but all we have to do is we have to just plug in the values of the point that we're given, minus two and three, plug that in there. And voila, it comes out to 18. So as I say, that's a, a nice fancy trick, a way of computing it. But as I say, you can't just write that down directly like that. You wouldn't get, I don't think you would get full credit for that. But uh, there, that's a little method that I, that I came up with. Okay, guys, so the answer, as I say, the original question was find the equation of the line perpendicular to 4x plus 3y equals 1, passing through the point minus 2, 3. That's the answer right there. 4y minus 3x equals 18. And I've showed you a couple of little tips and tricks to help help make sure that you're on the right path. Okay, so the thing to take away from this as well is that the product of the gradients, m1 times m2 is minus 1. Now, if the question said you didn't have to show the full working out, if you were able to write the answer down and get full credit, then yeah, you could just go straight into that method and show off. But anyway, we're not here to show off. Well, I am. I'm a bit of a show off. Okay, guys, well, thanks for your time. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate this. We're going to be looking at more exam style questions from A-level and Scottish Higher Maths. So join me on the next video for question two. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. See you on the next video.